بسم اللہ میں السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گن ٹاک اباؤٹ ویری انٹرسٹنگ ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از انسٹیٹیوشنل فریم ورکس فار افیکٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس ناؤ اگین وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ ایشوز آف اینڈ دا ڈفرنٹ چیلنجز اینڈ دا ڈفرنٹ لمیٹیشن اینڈ کنسٹرینٹس آف ڈیولپنگ اکانمیز ان دا کانٹیکسٹ آف کارپوریٹ فریم آف کارپوریٹ گورننس ناؤ ٹو انشور دیٹ وی کین اوور کم آل آف دوز لمیٹیشن اینڈ کنسٹرینٹس اٹس ویری امپارٹنٹ ٹو ہیو دا رائٹ ٹائپ آف انسٹیٹیوشنل فریم ورکس اینڈ Uh, as we can see that there are three different ways in which owners maintain control over the work of the management first of all the owners directly influence the corporate strategy and the selection of the top management team so what we see is that the owners are the ones who are directly involved uh, in the selection uh, and also in giving the roles and responsibilities of the top management team and that would mean that there is a direct involvement and that is what we see basically in countries like pakistan that in most cases Uh, the owners are directly influencing uh, the corporate strategy and also uh, the selection of the top management team. The second option is that the owners delegate their rights to the board, but ensure that compensation and other incentives are aligned with the share price maximization. So again, and this is also happening in Pakistan, but to a lesser extent, uh, whereby the board of directors are the ones who ensure through the remuneration committee that the compensation and other incentives are aligned for the top management. but Uh, they are also responsible for share price maximization and profit maximization. And therefore, this is the second option which can exist. The third option could be that owners rely on the market mechanisms of corporate control, such as takeover, uh, when due to a decreasing share price, new owners take over a company. So that is a situation which we don't see that much in Pakistan. We see it abroad where there are uh, these different uh, takeovers taking place. Uh, well, just recently, uh, we basically saw uh, Elon Musk uh, trying to Uh, take over uh, the the this this huge multi billion uh, twitter and offered about 44 billion uh, dollars for it but that could also not take place and that was uh, a basically a mutually agreed type of takeover uh, taking place but there are times when there are there's something which is called a hostile takeover so market dynamics and market mechanisms and also uh, the the performance of the organization matter and all of this and uh, this becomes a very complex metrics and complex, uh, you can say, uh, dynamics of uh, company uh, control, uh, management, and uh, also uh, of uh, negotiating share prices and things like that. But uh, different scenarios, different situations uh, could even be uh, something like uh, a merger, uh, for example, which took place between, uh, let's say, a uh, very famous merger, which took place between um, uh, Mercedes uh, Daimler and uh, between Uh, the uh, Chrysler uh, Corporation of uh, America, but that also led to a major breakup. So it, it could be different dynamics which are there and the market is basically defining all of that. So these are the three different options which can be looked at. And like I mentioned to you, the first option and the second option uh, are more, uh, more, you can say, aligned towards the Pakistani market, while the third one is something which we see more in uh, countries like uh, America to a lesser extent. Uh, in Europe and also the Far East, and then definitely uh, not that much in countries like uh, Pakistan. Uh, the corporate uh, governance mechanisms can be both internal and external. There are two basic dilemmas connected with the corporate governance problem in transition econ economy. So again, could be internal, could be external. Uh, both uh, could have a very balanced mix to ensure uh, that uh, things are done in a better way. But when we are looking at it first, is it possible to have identical framework that is evolved over centuries? Uh, in the developed market economies for the emergent markets, just like I was mentioning that uh, these, um, these whole dynamics uh, which exist in, in Western countries, uh, can we follow all of that? Or is it better to adapt the system of corporate governance to the specific circumstances of a transition economy? Just like what we are seeing in Pakistan, what we have seen in countries uh, like India, uh, we have seen in Thailand, we have seen in Vietnam, to a certain extent we have seen in China, and again uh, we have seen Uh, also uh, in the Philippines and in Malaysia and in Indonesia. Now, uh, this, this whole Asian tiger or this whole Asian uh, regional contextualization is the second option. And the first one is definitely uh, that we look at what already has existed uh, in established markets in the West. But uh, like this, uh, this, there's a very nice book called uh, Can Asians Think by Mr. Kishore Mabubani, who was the dean of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. It's a very good book to read if you want to. So again, I mean, uh, what do we have? I mean, should we follow established models of the West or can we, as uh, the Asians have 
an adaptable system uh, which is more specific to the emerging and transition economies. Uh, that those are the options that we can look at to have more effective corporate governance. So uh, that is a matter uh, of circumstances and also of situations and also of market dynamics. Thank you so much.